this video shows you how to make a spiral wand. This is what it will look like. I admit this one actually needs some more sanding and probably a coat of polyurethane would be good. When you learn this spiral technique, you could use it on canes, on a walking stick, or a spoon handle. And I'm sure there's some other things you could use it for. A unicorn horn, if you want to carve your own unicorn, it'd be perfect for that. What I'm using is a hardwood dowel that I got at the local hardware store. They're very common to get. And it it's actually makes it a little easier to do the spiral with something round. It's This is three-fourths of an inch round. And I'm making mine 15 inches long. But you could make it 12 inches long that would work or 13 whatever you want you can also do this using a piece of wood that has four sides but if you do that the first thing you need to do is remove all four corners the whole length of the wood and round it down Then the way to start is you put this on the top and the bottom. It's a plus sign and an X. And you do that again on the bottom. And the reason for that is to help you when you taper that end, you use this design to help you center the taper. It's also really a good idea when you start this before you even cut off the piece of wood you want, before you measure the length and cut it, to take your knife and cut a few pieces long ways on each end. That way you can find out which way the grain of the wood runs. Because you want it to be easy to carve on the end you're going to taper off. And that just makes it so much easier to find out first which way the wood grain runs. The next thing you do is you measure down from the top a fourth of an inch down. And you put a straight line all the way around. Later you will shape this into kind of like an elongated ball. You, you, you'll cut down the wood about half a half the way deep on this line and then after that I use a piece of tape to measure this tape is a half inch wide you can also get tape that is three-fourths of an inch wide or if you prefer you can make the pieces farther apart and that will make your spirals not as tight together. It's whatever you prefer. So you take that line, the first line, you put your piece of tape down, wrap it around, and then you draw a pencil line straight under that all the way around, and then you repeat that, and that's how you get all these lines that goes around. After that, you use this on top, and you pick one of them, and then you make a straight line all the way down the length, and that is after you have tapered the end. You want the end to be shaped like this, 
and you want to taper almost the whole length of your wand. So after you have tapered your wand, then you put that line, pencil line, all the way down the length of it. You keep going the whole length. And you then you pick the one on the opposite side, do the same thing, and then one, you end up with four of those long lines. The next thing you do is you take a black permanent marker and you start from the corner and go at a diagonal to the opposite corner, then down one to the corner and down to the opposite at a diagonal. You repeat that over the entire length of the wand except for the top one, one inch. Then what you do you can either use a knife. If you use a knife to do it, you go up. You go at an angle where the black marker line is. And you go at an angle and you go up under that ink line. Then you go above it at an angle and you cut down at an angle and you remove that ink line and you do that everywhere there's a marker line through the whole length of your wand. I am using, I have an electric rotary tool. It's, it's a generic type of Dremel and I'm just going straight down on the, those lines. And to do that, you want to go pretty deep, not extremely deep, but you do want to go pretty deep on every one of these lines. I haven't done this one line yet, but you follow the line and you go, and if you do it with a knife, you still make it, your cuts pretty deep. You don't want to go extremely deep but pretty deep because that way your spiral will stand out more and after you do that on every one of those then you round off your spiral this is really a simple project and it is very easy to do and once you learn how to do that spiral you can use it on other projects like the handle of a spoon this wand is coming along really well I should mention that when you're you're cutting when you're cutting down the grooves making them deeper and deeper you don't want to go as deep on the lower end where this is tapered you want to go deeper on the thick end and not as deep down at the end where it's tapered what I did my grooves with is electric rotary tool. It's a generic type of Dremel. And then I use uh, Dremel bits in it. Hopefully you can see this. It's a rounded tip. And this is what I use to do the grooves of my wand. You could also use a knife just as easily. I think at the beginning of this, I accidentally said that this part here was a fourth of an inch round, a fourth of an inch long, pardon me. It's one inch long. 
and all I did was round out the edges at the top and round out the edges at the bottom of it. Makes a little knob there. So after you get your grooves done, you round out the edges. I actually did a video earlier showing how to do this and for some reason I didn't get it recorded. So I don't have any places left to really show one, but I can try to explain. After you get your grooves in there deep, then you go over the edge of your spiral and you remove the edge at an angle. And then you remove the other side of the spiral at an angle. And then you go back over that and you have like a little crease line there and you use your knife and you remove the crease that you made on each side of those and you do that all the way down I used a knife to round out the spirals after you get this far along then you go back over it with your Dremel bit with it with the tool on low and you just kind of gently go over it and you remove imperfections down in the crease and just kind of even it up and smooth it out and then you go over it and you sand it really well which I still need to do and then if you want you can add some polyurethane to it or whatever finish you prefer